it was maybe could be better. So and like I said, I'm not too worried about the winter time because there aren't as many walkers and so on. It's just a lot of activity at that intersection. Good point. All right. Thank you, Tom. The pavilion. <laughs> Taken 30 years, so we had an accessible path in the parking lot to the pavilion. Okay. And I, I credit uh, Tom Mike for that. Um, regarding liability, town liability, and power <coughs> equipment, private citizens, I was told um, when I worked on the fire, the barbecue pit last year, I could not touch a brick with a hammer and chisel until I provide a proof of a million dollars in liability. And I have all the emails from Nick with that, and my insurance company provided that to the town before I was allowed to walk to that fire pit, so the barbecue pit. So we, again, this has been going on for three years now. People are mowing out in Hope Davy. Here's uh, Mark Steerwell mowing the wetlands. This is a week ago. Mowed down flat the delineated wetlands. So running power equipment, this is from last fall. There's folks with chainsaws taking down trees. There was an issue at the time of whether there was a <coughs> approval for that or not. So I've been directly told by town officials that the town policy is that private equipment, power equipment is not allowed on town property. I have not seen anywhere in the town books what the actual policy is. And I also was told to subcontract in any way that you needed to have $1 million in personal liability. So I don't know where that exists. Is there somewhere that that's in the book so people can understand what the policy actually is? I've been trying to clarify that with our insurance company. Well, where is it right now for the past three to five years? Where is it that people are telling me this? I don't know what the what occurred the past three to five years. Um, so there's no handbook of town policy ordinances which would have said this because people said this uh bill woodruff said this so the, the normal policy uh, i'll use the rotary as an example the rotary has its own insurance the town has an mou with the rotary for their work at rusty parker the challenge at hope davy is center chains is not an organization uh -huh. it'd be, but we do it'd, have... be, it'd be easier if they were a nonprofit, for example so going forward i'm Going forward, the insurance advises that individuals doing work, authorized work in town property as volunteers at a minimum need to sign a waiver. We're trying to get some clarity on the issue of do we need to go beyond that if there's things like power tools, if it's things like trail clearing and uh, more minor things, probably not. So I'm trying to get that clarity from, from the legal system towns that provides our insurance. Is that policy in our cash management policy? Because I know we have to have that documentation to pay a vendor. No, these are unpaid, which is a bit of a challenge. And we are going to address ordinances uh, at our next meeting on the 19th. Uh, so perhaps we can uh, bring that onto the agenda as well. Okay. Anything else, Tom? Um, the next thing is... You only have one minute left, by the way. Okay. Well, we've gone through $70,000 roughly on this park study. We have this accessible path to show for it. Um, Steve Lodspeak said this week that everyone on the steering committee is appointed by the select board. So Steve resigned his town position. He's on the steering committee. What's his status? What was the status and the uh, process for him to be on the steering committee when he's no longer a town employee? What, what was done to have that happen? Well, I believe he's, he was the only town employee uh, on the committee, and uh, I believe the decision was to keep him on because the uh, study is ending. Huh? Yeah. But was that a select board process? With... So he was appointed by the select board. The select okay, board. but he ended his, he terminated his employment. Uh, I understand, but he's also, for example, was appointed to the tree committee as a volunteer, and he remains on that until his appointment ends. Okay, right. the, the second half of that is he's being paid. And I asked for both his, the, uh, his, his contract and his uh, duties under that contract and his rate of pay, which he says is his private business. But he's a public servant as he works for the town. Where is that information available and where is his contract available? So there's no contract, he's a part-time employee. How do you define that? Defined as he was hired to, in essence, uh, 
finish this project, host the final committee meeting, and that's really it. Okay, was that it? Comments. Was that your? Is that a discretionary that's decision? Correct. He's paid at his whatever okay. his he was salaried before, but we translated that to an hourly rate. Okay, will that information be public information? Sure. What he's being paid, will that be available? Yes, absolutely. Okay. The last point. Uh, I think you're out of time. I'm sorry, Tom. Okay. Well, anyway, some of those drivers are drunk going down Howard Ave. Um, somebody was very inebriated on the park the other day, and uh, they drive away from there. And this shows you a typical day uh, out on Hope Davy on a weekend. There's a lot of alcohol in the sun. Anyway, so thank you. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Anyone else for the public session? All right. Uh, moving on, we have the appointment of applicants for the library commissioner for one expired seat. And once again, uh, we're in the unenviable position of having three qualified candidates uh, and only one position to appoint. So uh, I'd like to start uh, with Pauline Nolte. Pauline, can you come up and just talk about your interest in the position? Um, why I'm interested, um, ever since coming to uh, Waterbury three years ago, I really got active even though I've retired and retired and retired <laughs> from many things. But after um, going to the library, getting involved in some of the things and programs, um, and also getting involved with the town's um, activities, I thought, It'd be nice to jump in again and uh, be involved again. Um, just to let you know, I back in California, I was involved with the library all the way from the Friends Group, um, the board of the foundation, um, city library advisory committee, all the way up to even county commissioner. Hmm. Um, on the library commission. So after 21 years, I was I was reluctant to stop, but it's because I moved away. <laughs> That's one way of getting out of certain things is moving away. <laughs> yeah, I know. But um, I think um, I have enough interest in the Waterbury Library that I'd like to jump back in. Okay. Questions? No? No. All right, well, thank you. Great. Um, Michelle Baker. Hello. Hi. Um, Michelle Baker. I've served on the Friends of the Library, Public Library, um, I think since 2016. I've been the treasurer. So I served during a period of time when uh, we were uh, finalizing the capital campaign uh, that financed this building. Um, so uh, in that position, I've gotten to know a lot about the library and its programs, its operations. Um, so when I heard this position was available, I thought it was a good one to step into. Um, I am a certified public accountant and I understand that the person that uh, is leaving their term um, did serve as the treasurer of the commission, so I thought my skills might be helpful there. Um, you know, the library has meant a lot to me throughout my years. Um, as a kid, I used to come to the library. It was a great place for me to come after school and be safe. Um, when my kids were really young, um, I used to bring them to the library for all the story times, and now um, I really appreciate the library and all the digital resources it's offered. I think it was really important during the pandemic time, all the services it offered. And lastly, um, the strategic plan just got completed, and I think that um, says a lot about the future of our library and the opportunities that are there, and I'd like to participate in that. All right, thanks. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Very quiet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the Dean, Mark, I'm going to mispronounce your last name. If you got my first name, that's harder. Thank you. Mulder. Hey, Dean Mulder. Mulder, thank you. Nice to see you all. Thanks for entertaining my application. 
but uh, having just heard the, the past two, I think we've got some good candidates, and I'm okay if you appoint one of the other ones. I have experience. I am a, a professional librarian I've, um, and a lawyer, but uh, I do other volunteer work in the community, and I like to have a nice broad array of community volunteers, so uh, unless you have like a specific question for me, but I'm not desperate to be on your library commission right now, well, I can be on it some other time. <laughs> Again, board. Continue quiet. Okay, uh, we have heard from the three candidates. Uh, does anyone, does anyone care to uh, make a motion? Mike. I make a motion to appoint Michelle Baker as a library trustee. Do we have a second? Second. All right. The motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? I just thank everyone for applying. <laughs> I think it really does speak yes. to the wealth of experience in this community to have folks stepping up um, and just appreciate, um, in particular, also Michelle's long-term involvement over many years um, in the organization. Yes, I made that motion. I think all three candidates have a lot to offer. As a matter of fact, I think it would be great if any of you wanted to be an alternate. Uh, that would always be welcome. But I heard from Michelle that the treasurer is leaving and with her experience as a CPA, I think that's those skills to me would be very important to the library. That's why I made the motion. Right. And I'll just add that, uh, as Begin noted, we do have other uh, openings uh, or opportunities uh, coming up. So uh, please, if you're interested in serving the town, uh, we have a great uh, batch of volunteers here, and be, we'd love to have you join. Any further discussion about the on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations to Michelle. Thank you for joining us. All right. Next item on the agenda is revitalizing Waterbury. Uh, Karen, are you ready for, to make a presentation for us? A couple of presentations. <laughs> Mike. Roger, I just want to say I probably need to uh, excuse myself from the conversation, especially on the Stowe Street Alley project, because I'm on their fundraising committee for that project. All right. So I don't know if you want me to sit in. No, I appreciate it if you would uh, stay for the discussion, but perhaps recuse yourself if right. there's a vote uh, on funding. Okay, so starting with um, the Stowe Street Alley project, uh, I um, had a conversation with Tom, a couple of Met with Tom uh, about a, well, March 3rd, about <laughs> early March, or early March um, regarding the Stowe Street Alley project. And um, uh, to sort of bring him up to date and to make a very specific request. Uh, and I've detailed it at length. Uh, the alley, we've been doing significant fundraising. Uh, it is an expensive and complex project that we've been working on for amazingly <coughs> two and a half years. And at this point, I felt it was time to ask the town if it would be willing to contribute to the project, particularly through the ARCA funds that you have available. Um, I've asked for uh, a $20,000 um, contribution that amounts to one-tenth of the total project costs as estimated at this moment. I am not going to pin down the final cost of this project yet, um, as every time we turn around, something else comes up. Um, but the project is going incredibly well. There is a good number of, of colleagues from the committees um, here. Uh, we meet monthly and then some, uh, and as Mike explained, I've even got a new fundraising committee and some people outside of the group have started to uh, uh, 
meet and help work on uh, fundraising. Uh, as I explained in my notes, um, we've sought money from a variety of resources. We look at different revenue streams. And a lot of those, uh, the funding started with grants, uh, donations in memory of Jack Carter when he passed away in 2020. Um, and then we did a fundraiser for bricks, and I just gave Alyssa her mini brick. Uh, so uh, the bricks, we made $35,000 on uh, the brick fundraiser, and we have over 400 engraved bricks that are going to be installed. Um, very soon. I'm, I've written grants and uh, we did receive a $15,000 animating infrastructure grant for the gateway which is a particular piece of artwork that will be uh, at the entrance of the alley from Stowe Street um, into the alley. We'll, this is going to be something that this town will be incredibly proud of and uh, will draw people to the town. Uh, every component of this project uh, is um, is important. Uh, one key thing is that this is not a donation to Revitalizing Waterbury. This is a donation to a coalition of partners that are all working together. Uh, RW's name is on it because we're a 501c3 and we have the staff to uh, manage this project. But that doesn't mean um, the Waterbury Rotary Club, Makers Fair, Waterbury Arts, property owners, and local business owners, all of which are represented in the room right this minute. Um, are part of this project. So I could talk on end on the Stowe Street Alley project, trust me, but I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, I will note that when I was reviewing this document, there were two additional grants that we were waiting to hear from. We did not get them. Uh, one was AARP and one, the other one was from the Vermont Community Foundation. But that doesn't stop us. <laughs> plenty more to go. But I do think a uh, commitment from the town would add you um, as a significant partner uh, to this project and uh, really be a statement of the importance of taking this alley and um, transforming it into a place that is going to be incredibly unique for the entire state of Vermont as a place to come and be and spend time. <coughs> I will answer right. questions. Okay. I'll just start by saying that um, we did deliberate uh, uh, long and hard uh, during our last uh, deliberation on the uh, 2023 budget on ARPA funding. Uh, we did a um, city or townwide survey and received uh, over 500 responses uh, and used that as a guide for our investment in 2023. And we committed to doing sort of a similar deliberative process uh, in 2024. So um, I'm not convinced we're gonna be able to make a decision tonight, but we may. Um, that's just sort of uh, to, to start out the, tell you where we are with, with our funding process. Um, with that, I'll open it up to the board for any further questions or comments. Tom, do you have an update uh, on, um, there was $200,000 budgeted uh, for the uh, reappraisal, and I don't know where we are with that. Um, still planning to move forward. The state um, debated a bill where they would take over the reappraisal process, mm -hmm. and they eventually decided to do a study. Of course, they did. there's still support for it, so the challenge we could have going forward is um, we can delay weir appraisal for a couple years, mm -hmm. um, but we have to use the ARPA funds within that time frame also. Good point. Um, so we we have as of today about three hundred thousand dollars in available ARPA funds, but if we do the weir appraisal ourselves, uh, we have another two hundred thousand dollars in ARPA funds. May I add something? This project, remember, is sort of two components. There's placemaking, which is really creating a special uh, place within this community. It's not just the street. It's just not the sidewalk. Um, it will really activate it. The other component to this project is about public art. And there, we're really looking at every single component of this project to um, impact 
it, with public art. And by, when a community starts investing its money in public art, it's really saying something about how we are, um, we've matured to a level where there's, they, we see that art and how, it, how people interact with it on the streets and how we communicate with each other uh, really is a statement of what kind of community we are and how we want to um, interact and be uh, present with um, our guests, our visitors, our residents, our businesses, our business owners. And I'll keep talking. To you. <laughs> well, I think it's yeah. clear that the, it's a really important project to the town. And I agree that the town having monetary investment is more than just a monetary investment. It's also, you know, showing the um, figurative investment as well. Right. And so making, you know, the town the best it can be. Like Roger said, we are still full, not fully decided on the process mm -hmm. of making decisions. So I wouldn't feel necessarily really comfortable making a, a, taking a vote tonight. But um, I would like to, and this was um, later in the meeting before we plan our next agenda, maybe add that another conversation about what our next steps are because we got kind of far ahead and then now it's been a few months and mm -hmm. we haven't had the conversation again. So um, that would be my inclination and I'm not sure if there are other input on that. Um, I guess the, my only other thought is that uh, the intention of the ARBA funding really was uh, to uh, part of the recovery uh, and I'm just wondering if you had some thoughts on the impact of the alley on the, the economic uh, vitality of the town. Oh, absolutely. This is all about recovery. <coughs> First of all, if you take a look at what we've done on Main Street and there's this beautiful I mean, this was a three-year, 30-year-long process um, to create a streetscape with sidewalks and lampposts in this design and just really make it. The telephone poles are about to come down. I mean, we could not be more excited about that. Um, so we, this town and the state and the federal government invested to make Main Street um, in Waterbury a really beautiful place, uh, and but it missed one little piece, and there's this alley, and it is a really decrepit kind piece of property, and it's right in the middle of town. It's next to a couple of very, very important businesses in our town, including Stowe Street Emporium, and Kathy Murphy is present here today. It's across the street from the Waterbury Senior Center. It's across from the street from the American Legion. It is the other neighbor is the Masons who is also represented here today. Tom Nesbitt is here from the Masons. Um, this property is an eyesore. And as our community has come back from COVID and from and recovering itself, we continue to try to draw people into our community to come and spend their money and to spend time we don't want them just to come in, pop in, go to the restaurant and leave. We want them to spend time. We want them to walk down the street. And if they walk down the street and all of a sudden come across this interesting sort of gateway and go, oh, what's that? And they walk in and then they sit down and they and sit down with their a friend and have a little talk and then they can pop into the store and go get a cookie across the street. And it becomes a place. And then next time they want to come into town, that's where they'll start before they go to the restaurant. They'll come down an hour early and spend some time. This is all about revitalizing, that's my <laughs> word, sorry about that. It's all about recovering and making our businesses strong. And uh, it's taking, it, it takes time and we're very fortunate that people are coming back and have come back to Waterbury. But there's brand new businesses on, on that street um, Stones Throw Pizza just opened up and that closed during the pandemic. That restaurant closed during the pandemic. Axel's moved across the street and the new business is moving in. They're looking to make sure, you know, we want to be able to drive and bring people here. So I think this ties beautifully into ARPA um, and this project certainly started in the smack dab in the middle of COVID and we've been working on it ever since. <laughs> um, also, I'm not expecting you to make a decision tonight. This project is at least two more years down the line. Um, so, but 
the day you call me and say, Karen, we're sending you a check for $20,000, is a great day, and we will celebrate. I will also encourage you, it doesn't just have to be 20, it can always be more. Um, <laughs> but I, we have some real significant uh, fundraising projects and plans, and um, you are only one of many that we are speaking to. Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Uh, uh, Alyssa. I have two questions, hopefully one quick. One very specific, I know your budgets, Karen. Can we talk about the cost of benches? <laughs> Is that how much they cost now? Um, it depends. So some of these costs are bumped up because of grants. Okay. Okay. So we applied for a $10,000 grant from AARP because part of the grant budget included special AARP signage that had to be included. And then there's also, um, you can't just build, a bench is about 1,000 to 1,500, but we've been talking about making a bench, not just a standard square bench, but a bench that has an enhancement through an artistic look or something that ties it. That's not, nothing here is going to be, um, now I'm going to say that differently. If, when you buy public art and you make something art public, you want it to last for 20 years. I don't want to have to replace this in five. So we're going to invest the money to make it a really important piece. Um, so there's also you know, the installation, there's putting in the, the pads and, and designing the whole thing. So 10,000, yeah, no, that's definitely a little uh, ramped up. But um, oh, okay. that was a, you know, We'll see. <laughs> um, and then my other is I see you have MOU developed with property owners, and I know you've met with the select board before, before I was on the board, but I guess I would just say, is there other types of support you need in terms of there will maintenance be. So, or support or logistics outside of just kind of cash contributions? Yes, yeah, so uh, in terms of lists here that we established a site control uh, MOU signed January 21st, 2021, a new one was signed in the middle of May, so it is absolutely up to date and current. Um, with both property owners so that we can move forward with the construction of the project. Awesome. Um, there will be a second piece, which is, and it says here, MOU being developed with property owners for ongoing maintenance plans. And I've briefly spoken to Tom about some things that we would really like the town to um, be involved with, like, can you pick up the trash? Um, you know, we have trash cans, trash, and then also talking a little bit about liability insurance. That's sort of the biggest kicker. Um, in my meeting with Tom, I also, uh, Woody was there and I said, and now was plowing it. And Woody looked at me and said, that can't be done. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know what? I know it today instead of in six months. And so now we come up with a different strategy or solution for that. Okay. So there may be other bits and pieces, yeah. um, but we have a, and we'll probably be work, not probably, we will be working on that maintenance MOU for moving forward of this summer. Awesome. Thank you so much. And yes, I guess I would just echo the same of in terms of process has been a little all over the place, but important public project. Okay. Mm -hmm. Done with that one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not done with it. We will put it on, <laughs> keep it on the done agenda and uh, revisit it uh, as soon as we can. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You can stand on the view. Next, number two now. Um, you should have, I, I don't know if we need to have any major discussion. You should have received my special event permit application for the Waterway Arts Fest. I think it's approved. Has it been approved? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I need the signature page because I can't. I have oh. to sit no, we need to, to make state. a motion to approve this special yeah. event oh, permit right. as oh, its own. Sorry. And then my other question was, in light of that, do we also need to repass the consent agenda, which lists July 16th, given that this event was the 14th 15. and 15th? So I'm guessing the one on the consent agenda, mm -hmm. that is the alcohol permit. Is that correct? Right. right. But that, July 16th yeah, that would be Sunday. Permit. That is the wrong date. You're right. Okay. So we'll, I'll make a motion for both just so that we can be extra special share yeah. um, if that works for folks. So I would move to approve the special event permit application for Waterway Arts Fest and Friday night block party as presented and also um, the Black Flannel Distilling Company special events permit for July 14th, 14th. is it 2023. Um, Noting that it's being fenced. Yes. Thanks, Tom. I will second the motion. All right. 
I have a motion moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any opposed? <laughs> any abstentions? All right. And it looks like you just signed it. I just, I, I have to have your Definitely signed version. I, <laughs> I, would, I would like to sign one so I can scan it, please. And then I can, do it. can I give it to you and pick it up tomorrow? Yes, please. I need to get my permit to the state with before 30 days, which is like seven days from now. Okay. You know what? I can try to sign another one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So last but not least, and just because it's fun, um, Tom, I have a present for you. <laughs> Tom asked me. <laughs> really took us somewhere. Uh, right. mm. We all have to put them on. Come on, come on, come on, team. We rearranged the table for you this reason. Cannot see. You can't see a thing. That's true. <laughs> Um, so I'm also going to hand out a couple of pieces of paper. Um, this is going to be really short because I talked to Tom and I actually think we need to have a major conversation about this topic. Um, the town of Waterbury will experience a total solar eclipse of the sun on April 8th, 2024 for two minutes and 30 seconds starting at 3.30 p.m. Um, and I attended a conference, actually, let's do this. I think one's pass it down. Um, I attended a conference, uh, the main, uh, it's the Main Street America conference, uh, for the downtown organizations in May, in March. And there was a town, Sweetwater, Tennessee, doing a presentation on their experience of doing, having a total eclipse of the sun in their community in 2017. And everyone goes, went in thinking so excited and I left scared to death. This sounds like it's going to be fun. It has great potential to impact our community significantly. And here's a couple of statistics. It's estimated between 50 to 200,000 people will travel to Vermont to view the view the uh, eclipse. People have already started booking their Airbnbs next year. I know that for a fact. My board chair says, oh, Karen, someone booked my Airbnb for April 2024 for some light thing? I'm like, oh, did you raise your prices? She goes, no. I said, oh, well. Um, so this map shows you two things. This is Vermont, this is the path of totality, and you can see where Waterbury is, two minutes and 30 seconds, okay? Um, plenty of places north of us, but I think the really important thing to look at is where is Waterbury when it comes to the interstate, okay? Exit 10. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you know what? Other than Montpelier, where you can get less than two minutes, for viewing, we are the first town to so go look on the other side. You, if you get in the car in Boston and drive to Vermont, this is you can either go up 91 to St. John's where you're going to come to us. Okay, um, they're not going to go to Stowe because they have to go through Waterbury to go to Stowe. They're coming to us, and I really, truly believe that we're going to see an incredible impact of people coming to the town of Waterbury. Um, and and you, you know, if you look at it, I mean, yes, northern New Hampshire, but who, there's no interstate to go to northern New Hampshire. Why would you do that? You know, Montreal and Canada, they're not coming south. They're right in the middle of it. But really, truly, New York City, Boston, Connecticut, Massachusetts, getting in the car, going north, they're going to go up 89 or 91. They're going to come to us. So there are things to really be worried about. Um, traffic. Public safety. By the way, I've already spoken to the state of Vermont, and we have tried to start them getting them to be aware that this is going to be something to be concerned about. Woody said the Department of Public State Buildings and General Services put out an announcement, hey, this is happening, but didn't really think it through. If 50,000, if 10,000 people come to Waterbury, it's going to be a major impact. People will get out of their cars and sit in the middle of the road, because guess what? The middle of the road is where there's no trees. And you can see the, um, see the, see the um, eclipse. 
And these are all experiences from Sweetwater, Tennessee. Um, so they're going to stop, they'll stop on the interstate. This public safety is not just our problem, it's the Vermont State Public, you know, public Safety have to really think about these things. Um, emergency responders, if all the roads are closed or filled and clogged with people uh, and, and cars, we got to make sure our ambulances and our fire trucks can get to where they need to go. Uh, they had experience with uh, communications, all the cell towers were over, over um, um, The street lights are on sensors. Lights go out, <laughs> the sun goes down, the lights go up. Um, so can we turn the street, street lights off for the day? Um, porta potties. We have no public bathrooms in this town. Uh, when it comes to porta potties, toilet paper. She said there was a run on toilet paper in Sweetwater, Tennessee. So it's really an incredible amount of things to think about. Glasses, glasses, glasses. I bought a hundred pairs for seventy-five dollars. This I just got them so that I have some. Um, I know that. Revitalizing Waterbury is not interested in going into the glasses business, okay? But I know that there are some small businesses, and Katya is here from, and Kathy uh, are thinking about buying bulk. And she said, maybe we'll buy 500, and I'm like, or 10,000, but they can't <laughs> afford 10,000. So the trick is, is how do we support our businesses and think about these? Um, there'll be trash and recycling. Um, Did Sweetwater uh, give you an idea of how much people would be willing to pay for They two sold them for $2, classes, I think two dollars it was. Dollars. And they made $90,000 on the things they sold, but they sold everything, including parking spots. The problem <laughs> with Sweetwater Tennessee's eclipse was it was in August. Ours was on April 8th. We can plan Lots. till the ends of the earth, and it could be snowing. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, but if we don't plan, we're kind It'll of be a bright sunny day. It'll be a bright sunny day. <laughs> and so there's, but there's also things. What happens at our schools at 3:30 in the afternoon? The schools get out. Do you want your children getting on buses when there's a full, total eclipse of the sun, and they could ruin their eyes forever if they get out, go outside, and, and look at the sun? So should the schools be closed that day? I think the schools should be closed that day. <laughs> I can't get them to close for an election. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm telling you what the other problem is. Yeah. Yeah. The other, the other problem is Sweetwater, Tennessee experience took three week, three days for all those people to arrive. It took 12 to 15 hours for people to leave. The roads were packed and they couldn't get out. Our school buses will not be able to drive through town. Karen? It's a Monday. Right. Yes. Sorry. And Sweetwater is about the same size as Waterbury. Yes. Right? Sweetwater, Tennessee was 5,500 people. And they had 50,000 people show up. So Mike's got a question. Yes. Karen, we had an experience like this not that many years ago in Coventry, Vermont, when the fish uh, concert happened. <laughs> and granted, that was over was a long <laughs> period of time. <laughs> but it's going to be, there's going to be a swarm of people coming here, and there's going to be a possible bottleneck. So I think you've brought up some very applicable questions. So here's the other thing. We could say 10, what was it, what was my numbers? 50 to 200,000 people come to Vermont. Mm -hmm. What about all those people who live in Southern Vermont? They're gonna come up. So, you know, right. that's another, it's, the, it's just something to really be worried about. Um, other things, accommodations for diversity, accessibility, and languages. Um, Sweetwater, Tennessee had every people from every state in the country and 35, <coughs> yeah, every state and 35 countries present in their, um, in their place. Now, they also branded themselves as the only place to watch the, the um, eclipse in the state of Tennessee and promoted it to the ends of the earth. Revitalizing Waterway does not want to be in charge of this. <laughs> I'm just panicked about it. And so I have met with my downtown organizations. We've started planning, and I'm actually working with Montpelier's, uh, my colleague in Montpelier, to do, to do some co-planning. There are some towns, St. Albans just doesn't think they're going to have a band on the, on their, and they're not going to worry. There's not going to be too many people there. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's going to be the case for us. And, um, and then, so the other thing is our marketing and tourism committee at Revitalizing Waterbury wants, our goal is to make it a dis good experience for everybody mm -hmm. in some fashion. I don't want to be in charge, but I don't want us to ignore it. And I need you to know this, 
I don't know about, I mean, I don't have the money to buy and pay for all these things. It's not in your budget. Oh, by the way, this is eight days after the beginning of the new fiscal year for the town. Um, isn't the fiscal year start on April 1st? Or it goes back. So, uh, no, there's only calendar year. Oh, yeah, it'll be after elections. It'll yeah, be after but, but you, you see what I'm saying. Um, so I'm just sharing. Uh, if you're interested and curious, we're doing a, um, I'm doing a Zoom presentation on this tomorrow at 11 o'clock to the hospitality and tourism industry people in our town. Um, and um, anyone who might be interested to just get on and listen. Or I can do this presentation to you directly um, or uh, in a, a bigger way. Um, there's just a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. And it's not... The, the deal is they are going to come. Granted, if they wake up on April 8th and it's cloudy, they will get in the car and drive away. But they will start here. <laughs> um, can, and we can we get them to buy these new bills? Mm -hmm. Yes. I was thinking pre-order. Uh, Do you know how much it costs if you have, like, you know, Discover Waterbury or something. Well, you could do that, but you know, it's pain in the butt. Did you guys figure out how much it's? Um, I think for uh, God, for upwards of a thousand, it was sixty cents a piece. Yeah. These were these were seventy five cents a piece. Wow. Yeah. So so I think I think zero to five hundred is seventy five, and then five hundred to a thousand is seventy, and then it uh, It's not worth branding though. It really yeah. is a great way to do So, so we'll get stickers. We'll stick them. Stick them. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, I don't have an answer. I have. We have encouraged the state to perhaps buy like thirty thousand glasses, front the cost, and then let the towns, communities mm -hmm. buy them from them. Um, but the state seems to be moving at a significantly slower pace or level of concern than we are. So, and I will tell you the Department of Marketing and Tourism was part of my first presentation. We did it at the state level. And that, so they know. Um, so yeah, I've got a little level of anxiety. <laughs> and I want you to be anxious with me. <laughs> I don't have an answer as to what you can do, what we can do, but I just think you need to, it's important you know about this. It just seems that in addition to a problem, it could be an opportunity, mm -hmm. right? It is an opportunity, mm -hmm. but the only way it's going to be a good opportunity is if we consider and solve the problems. That's the important part. If we build big signs that point you to Grand Isle, it's a ten close. Well, they get an extra minute. They do get an extra minute, but two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, Sweetwater, Tennessee was like two minutes and 46 seconds. They were just a little bit more than that. But it also just because it starts 2.14. So it starts an hour and 15 minutes mm -hmm. before it's total. Mm. And then it takes another hour. So I mean, it's really a two yeah. oh, wow, to two and a half hour process. Mm -hmm. It's in the afternoon. The other thing with Sweetwater is half the people camped and people sold their front yards to, to campers. And so, you know, but we're not, this is April. I do think if anyone walked around our town on April 8th, it's really pretty filthy. Um, the snow, no it is, trust me. Um, Green Up Day is, on, is in May, but I suggest an early Waterbury Green Up Day um, where we go and pull up the, branches and clean up the garbage and things like that. So are Waterbury's, Revitalizing Waterbury's willing to be involved and help um, do the communication and do some of this work, we will do that. But the town, we may need to seek some assistance from you guys. And you need to be aware because public works. I, I, I shared this with Woody, his eyes slowly went like this. <laughs> he got big, but he also understood. They had stuff on TV two months ago when it was a, a year away mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was tourism but they were saying a lot of places are already picked up mm -hmm. for, for this. Oh, yeah. This is something that's kind of you know I, it, it's almost like if you don't have reservations already you're going to not be, uh, be able to take Well I've told my son and his family who live in Boston to take the weekend off and come to my house 
I said, I won't see you that day, but you can hang out in the yard and watch this, uh, watch it. So it will be, I mean, there will be a lot of people. Um, they're already, yes, already planning, but there will be more. It's as, it could easily be a day trip for some folks. Mm -hmm. And um, rent, rent space at that world. Well, honestly, there's some great places for viewing, which would be the state right. office complex, a uh, forest field, Pilgrim Park, Dak Row, Hope Davy. All of these would be great viewing locations. And if we wanted to plan to direct people um, to viewing, it would be a smart idea. And I still think somehow or other the school should be canceled one day. <laughs> well, I'll bring more. <laughs> Thank you. So, Maybe yeah. early release. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's the end or something. Alright, Karen, thank you very much. Any other questions from the board? No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And, you know, call me back if you want to talk about it. We will. It's in April. We could make a killing off Waterbury brand and snowshoes. Or snowshoes. You go. You go. Okay. Anyone want some glasses? Okay, we're stuck. Okay, we're stuck. A thousand people right about there on three minutes, 20 seconds. They're stressed. All right. Next on the agenda, we have the planning commission. Martha. Thank you. Are you Jerry? Yes. Can everybody back here here the Yeah, Yeah, and there's just coming. Thank you for coming and making the presentation. So I'm not really good at public speaking, so I have a few prepared things, and then uh, I do a lot better answering questions. Uh, so I'll try not to read it, but um, we want to first of all thank the select board for inviting us, and uh, thank you for your service uh, to the town, all of you. I know it takes a lot. We also want to thank Tom uh, for his new leadership and his thoughtfulness. Uh, I think we're all very fortunate to have Tom. Uh, with me is Mary Cohen. She's the longest standing member of the Planning Commission right now. She's a downtown resident and she's very passionate about Waterbury, uh, the Waterbury community. Mary's background is in working in public education at several locations around the state and at the state level. And I believe this is very helpful in appreciating what it is we have here in Waterbury and therefore contributing to what the work of the Planning Commission. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> um, personally, I work. My background is I've worked on. The, I served on the town zoning uh, zoning board of adjustment since around 2008. I will say writing this up made me feel very old. <laughs> um, transitioning to the DRB in 2011, and then um, looked to serve in a different from a different viewpoint, and joined the. I was appointed to the planning commission in 2019. Um, next year will be my 25th year of living in Waterbury, which I really enjoy. And I work, personally, I work for a, a Vermont renewable energy company and install solar and wind generation across projects in northern New England and Massachusetts. <coughs> um, I stepped into the role as chair after Alyssa uh, moved up to the select board. And so this is my second year in the role as chair. And as many of you know, the bylaw rewrite has been ongoing, the on, an ongoing task of the Planning Commission since around 2018. And so this process for the um, zoning up rewrite is, uh, is now under its third Planning Commission chair, <laughs> working to bring it to fruition. Anything so, else you want to add? Well, yeah, I want to, since I am, have been doing at this for a while. I want to highlight the accomplishments during 2018-2019 and into early 2020. Um, the the date on the draft that the consultant presented us with is May 2018, but 
during 2018, not only when we were working with her and um, providing input to for the to the planning director and the kind of direction we wanted the rewrite to take. We also updated the municipal plan, reflecting changes in our local government, state legislation that was passed in that year regarding forest fra fragmentation and local energy plan requirements. And that had to be done. We were five years out, and at the time, the municipal plans were renewed every five years. Now it's every eight years. So we had to get that done before the end of 2018. And the, our municipal plan is dated December 2018, so we accomplished that. But it, it meant when this um, draft was presented by the consultant that we basically had to then just turn around and abandon it because we had to focus on the municipal plan to meet state law and requirements for the town. Um, during that time, we also worked um, with uh, around the expansion of the village historic districts and developed historic overlay district regulations. And I'll say something more about that in a minute. Um, I went through a lot of minutes, and I, mm -hmm. some of these I remembered, and some of these it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, Winooski River Tactical Basin Plan. We had a presentation from the CBPRC, whatever it is, Regional Planning Commission. Um, and River Corridor Regulations. So there we had state folks who kind of we, um, there, we were involved with the wayfinding grant that was responsible for all the signage in town and also the interim signage bylaws during Main Street reconstruction, which started at that time. Um, we spent a lot of time with the zoning administrator contract, <coughs> excuse me, renewal and changes to job description and performance review process. Um, we spent a lot of time sort of our own professional development, if you will, uh, around Vermont Green Streets Guide, Complete Streets um, guidance that was coming from the state, Zoning Guide for Vermont Neighborhoods, also known as Building Better Places, and this gave us a lot of, of uh, input around the whole land use planning and helped us you know, make decisions that I think will eventually be really beneficial for the town. So, as I was looking through all this for 2018, 2019, and you know, during this time we had, we, we had public input, we made a decision that, you know, in, in hindsight maybe could, we could have done something a little bit differently, but to put this full rewrite, and Martha's going to talk a little more about it, up on the website. So we had a lot of people who found it and would come and ask questions and what are we doing, and it really was something that we had never seen. Oh, bye. <laughs> it was something we'd never seen, so it really is. We're going through, you know, page by page. <clears throat> Recording in search. progress. Thank you. Um, but this turn that we took and spent time on during the summer and fall of, of 2019 uh, around the historic district regulations came from requests from select board members at the time, from DRB member and from the um, planning director, that this was something the town needed, this was something the town wanted. There had been some historic buildings demolished that, that um, you know, because there were no regulations that even guided what would need to happen if, if um, someone wanted to demolish a historic building. So we, we kind of, again, took a, took a side road and we had a public hearing on February 10th, 2020. <laughs> and it became very clear that no, this was not a direction that there was any <coughs> public support for us to do. And so we scratched that I that we had spent, we, I think we, we did start it in the summer of 2019 at a 2024 <coughs> meeting. And then March of 2020 was shut down. Yeah, everything stops. So I, I, I felt it was important for especially those of you who are new uh, to the planning, I mean to the select board, to, to kind of see, I mean this period of time that was kind of 
crucial that maybe looks like we weren't doing anything. <laughs> it seems important to know that we were doing a lot and responding to a lot of things that come to us or come to the, the town um, staff and then to us. So it's, it's, it's hard to stay on track. And we've, we've had a lot of you know, new members and changes in leadership. So we just kind of keep working on it. Yeah, so to pick up from there, we are a five board member. Um, we have um, our vice chair is Katie Gallagher and Dana Allen, who joined us both last year, 2022. And uh, recently you uh, appointed Billy Victor. So we have new energy, we have new staffing. Um, I think we're turning a corner. Um, we have a, 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 we framed a path to getting the unified phase one unified bylaws out for public hearing in the winter 23-24. Now that has slid a little bit because we have the staffing opening still, uh, but we have a planning professional, uh, the planning professional assistance from Neil who has been, uh, that's giving us some good momentum and he's been extremely helpful. Uh, we recognize he's you know, carrying a couple of hats here right now, but um, he's really been helpful with the, to the Planning Commission with guidance and assistance, recommendations and stuff like that. So um, following, and then following you guys signing the law, uh, bylaw modernization grant for outreach, um, Neil and Dana and I um, have had an encouraging kickoff meeting with SE Group. Um, the original grant schedule was for proposed meetings this fall, but as I said, I think that's going to slide a bit into the winter. Um, um, we, I just, I think it's important to recognize both Tom and Neil's help in getting us organized, getting us on the path, and it's just really appreciated from my perspective as chair and having to come ready for these meetings. So, um, I think it's important to understand. Mary talked about the sort of interruptions. I would call it. It's not interruptions. That's part of our job, and we recognize that. But it is a. a, a deterrent it makes the path a little bit more wiggly than straight and narrow um, and the document that we are working with is extremely challenging and it's up on the website you can take a look at it and when you take a look at that and you look at what we currently have as regulations and try to compare you'll see some of the challenges that we're faced with and when people ask us what's changed here what's changed there so between um, the document that was to be a rewrite, uh, it's completely a different format, it's a different structure, um, it's, it's difficult to take that and then consider new legislation and compliance to that. We want to be current on our societal goals and challenges, um, and as I said, comparing what's changed and um, it's, it's just taken a while. <laughs> The phase, so we broke it into phases. The phase one addresses everything to the southwest of uh, I-89 to the river, and then from Bolton to Middlesex. So that's what the focus is right now. We want to be really clear that what's going to happen in the winter is not the whole town. It's just the districts on um, right. this side of the interstate. Um, we're, uh, we're very, I'll say very, uh, welcoming of SE Group's help. And like I said, the kickoff meeting went really well. They're reviewing. They're not only going to be helping us with the outreach, which is the contract, the grant, uh, but there is a small part of like getting themselves up to speed on the document itself and comparing what the changes are. So uh, we told them that it would be helpful if they have input. We certainly don't want them to not speak up. <laughs> Um, so I think that's sort of a summary of where we are and what we see the road ahead for the rest of this year and into the beginning of 24. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for us. Well, I think we want to help you be successful. So um, anything that we can do and uh, we'll open it up for questions from the board. 
I want to respond to that. Mm -hmm. I do want to thank the board for uh, actually <coughs> taking one step and having Alyssa be the, li the liaison to us. She's come to our meetings, and I think that is a, a nice way to open up a chain, a, a door of communication. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. I guess it's, oh, sorry, well, go ahead, Mike. Yeah. First, Mike. Thank you both for your service. That's the fir first and foremost. Um, public service is sometimes a, a, a thankless job, and you're doing a good job. Uh, secondly, I'm just wondering how you feel the possible changes to Act 250 will <coughs> affect our possible zoning rates. I don't know if you have any. I no idea. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a little bit of an unknown still. I it, mean, it is unknown. You know, it's really a negotiation that's going to happen at the State House. Um, it, it's kind of happening all all. Well, around it is, but that. it's not moving forward. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I don't want to, I again, that's a really, actually, that's a really good example where we need to uh, keep our eye on the prize of the bylaws while um, having Neil, and he's already done this, uh, bring the current state of legislation that's happening that we have to address now and to let us know about other legislation. But it hasn't gone anywhere at the State House, so um, we know it's there. It's sort of like back here. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Danny and then Kim. It's a general question that um, Roger just kind of opened the door to, but if there are other ways that we can be of help, um, I'd be curious to know or just actively saying, you know, our email inbox is open because what you do is invaluable to the town and you're a small group and you also have an entire life outside of what you do. Um, and the time it takes to do it is, it feels insurmountable sometimes. So if you have ideas now, great, or, you know, we might not always be able to, but I would like to know, like, if there are ways, you know, that that we can help or be supportive. Um, I, I, can I jump in? Yep. I I think I think that's I appreciate the question, Danny, and yeah. I think that uh, the phase one document. So there's there are two documents on the website. One is this massive UDB draft, and a lot of that. Sorry. There was not any discussion with the Planning Commission. It was kind of a boilerplate from the consultant, mm -hmm. and to be honest. So, and, and one of the things that's going to be a huge challenge that we're not going to tackle now, and so I'm sort of saying this, that it's going to come later, is a lot of administrative changes mm -hmm. and how the structure is going to work. So I, I don't know if Tom or any of you have thoughts about any aspect of the administrative section for future. So that would be number one, because it's really, it's di very different. It's just a whole different approach to um, the regulations, to the bylaws. The other thing is, um, I, I wanted, to, I, I, I don't know if there's a way to uh, color code. Martha and I were actually talking about this earlier, that part of the phase one draft that's up we have reviewed the yeah. whole use and dimensional table. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time making sure that those use definitions were things that we really felt were reflective of the town and what we wanted in the public input we had. We have looked at um, and, and carefully um, <coughs> edited the uh, three of the zoning districts that are in phase one the uh, downtown, the uh, made a use. couple little changes to yeah. the intro, but downtown, mixed use, and neighborhood. Um, so if if those two sections, you know, the, the dimension, the use table and the definitions, we've really spent a lot of time on it. So if there's anything there that's like, oh, we're not gonna support that, it would be good to know mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And then the three zoning districts that we have reviewed, and I, I don't know what, I, I, I'm thinking it would be most helpful for the things that we've worked a lot on before we go to a public hearing. That, we'll uh, that's just here. my, well, yeah, that's we'll just my, back. yeah. I think, I just wanna cut yeah. you off. <laughs> She's so bossy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hot. It's hot. It is. <laughs> um, 
Well, your question was, you know, what can you guys do? And I and I think the answer is look at what we've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and to her point, um, the hard part of looking at what we've done is what and have they what done and done. what haven't mm -hmm. they done? Okay, because we're still moving through the document. So use tables and uh, districts definitions and definitions. You know, th that's sort of the key. The other thing is that, and I, you know, this is part of the grant process is to work with you folks. We don't want to go out to a public hearing without knowing where you guys are. So we're going to need to meet again or work together or we need to hear from you as to what is good. You know, we, we have looked at very specific um, densities and lot sizes and things like that and we're talking about the downtown and so we're, we're going to have a conversation and we really we have no intention of having a public hearing that you guys aren't on board for mm -hmm. <laughs> all right i mean so that's really a primary key that we need your input for and and i think that i don't know what the next i we're, we're in right now we're working on special use right they call, that's what they're called, special development use regulations? Development standards. Development standards, yes, and, and, and which includes some special use standards. So we're in the process of working on that. And then we're going to go back to the zoning districts, and we have tourism business um, institution. It, it, institution and industrial that are also in phase one. So we're going to have to, and, and one of the things that I think is important to understand, and this was a, decision made a while ago that when we would do the phase one, like if we're changing something with regard to a particular zoning district, it's only going to be applicable in that geographic area that Martha, phase one, phase one. Mm -hmm. yeah, that Martha right. outlined. So, it's going to be you know, whatever the density or whatever the use allowed, or it, it's, you know, so it's going to be an interesting kind of laboratory to people like it for the whole rest of the town. I mean, that's just something Alyssa knows well. We decided we're, we got to tackle this so somehow. Let's hear from so, yeah. Okay. Ken? Oh, man, I forgot that I read it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to ask exactly what Danny asked. So I think we got a long form answer. Okay. Great. Just uh, wondering, would it be helpful to try to set up sort of a a calendar if we're going to, I think the interim bylaws uh, sunset in April. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. So we, so we'll we that's our backstop. Right. And yeah. then we got to think, do a little backwards build up here as to when would we need to have the final mm -hmm. regs in place for us to approve. Right. Uh, and then when do we want the public process? And then what are we going to need for that public process to, to, to happen? So, so I think. That's good to address that specifically. That is in, uh, in the um, thinking of SE Group and the schedule. And I've mentioned we're going to we're going to have to slide what was in the grant application. Mm -hmm. We had hoped to have it really in the fall, but um, and they know that we are we're still working on the document while they're preparing the storyboards. <laughs> yeah. So and, and doing a, a survey. So. Um, Good to you know make sure that's the backstop and we all recognize that's the end goal mm -hmm. if you will and right. work backwards and I think that's a great um, suggestion to get that timeline that is one of the things that we're that we are expecting right now they're looking at the document so mm -hmm. they hadn't really you know gotten their head around what we have and where we are mm -hmm. um, the new uh, the April I think it's April 18th 23 version of the phase one document, which Mary and Neil spent quite a bit of time getting all the accepted changes that we had already done. We hadn't yeah. even gotten the changes implemented that we had been working on for the last three years. That so that's all up on the website as of today, actually. Okay. So we have the most current version on the website. Mm -hmm. And then um, when we have our next call with uh, SE Group, I think we'll have a schedule or we'll get that working mm -hmm. and communicate that to you folks there, there's and there are also state regulations that dictate yeah uh, how many public hearings and when we do it and then yeah. when you do it so we'll, we'll definitely That's figure that out as well schedule. yeah yeah okay uh okay 
Um, <clears throat> when you get into the voting process on issues. When it what? On the voting, when you get into voting processes on issues in your commission, do you go with a um, ultimate majority or just just majority? Like, do you have unanimous vote and then you move forward, or yeah. do you just majority vote and you move yeah. forward? Okay. But we do try to reach consensus. Right. Oh, but if sure. we can't, we vote and it's majority. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. I watch the clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I believe it. Um, yeah. Alyssa. I mean, I will just echo my thanks. I know it's uh, less well attended than these meetings. So if you all want other things to do with your meetings, <laughs> please go join the planning commission. Um, work and really, I just know how thoughtful the group is and really thinking about and just to like pull everyone if your eyes have glazed over from UPB 12 times. Like I live on South Main Street. Can we put a pizza place next to my apartment? And if so, how big can it be? And can I smell the pizza from my porch? Like really, that's what zoning means for our communities and a lot of other things we have housing on our agenda later and I just want to say like again this is a piece of it where are we putting housing in our community we know we need more of it and how do we actually make that happen on the ground so thanks for being part of that I'm thinking more nuts and bolts I think this piece of coordination that I feel like we have both sides touching on yeah. we as a select board want to make sure we're on the same page as yeah. you as a planning commission and that we get a document that works for everyone and I'm just thinking about we as a select board don't all need to become zoning experts. That's why we have staff. But I think there is this maybe sometimes challenging disconnect. It is it like totally different language and meaning and just wondering about is it us as a board doing professional development or working with someone just so that when we you know, are hearing pushback on lot frontage and coverage, um, we have the tools to respond to that. Is that yeah. something you think SE Group is going to help with? Or should we look at how to do you know? We're, Part of the storyboard, this is why I'm, I, I've worked with SE Group just on my own professional career, so I'm very well aware of what they're capable of doing, and they're going to do it. I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and there are ways of telling the story of, with pictures, more than just words. So showing, you know, if you have this scenario, it's going to look like this. And we'll use, we've already talked about using actual Waterbury Street Example, so it's a real live. You can walk down and go look at it and go, oh yeah, I saw that, and now it's going to have this capability. So there is that education piece that uh, is part of the public engagement process, anyway. And how can the select board engage in that earlier? You know, I'm, um, I'll keep that in mind as we're talking to them and ask them if they have some suggestions. It's a good, a good question. I, I think it would be helpful because when we have our public hearing that you all attend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a way to do it. But I wanted to, it, the, the industrial district is a place where we've had some dis, preliminary discussions, I guess, about whether to allow housing in the industrial district. I mean, you know, there's yeah. the strip there. And I, for one thing, we should. And the industry that we have is not. Um, heavy industry so that's something if you can sort of look at and think about and you know look at the map and what do you think you know that would, I think that's going to be kind of a controversial section um, we haven't gotten there on the board though no <laughs> no but I just but it is. If they didn't think you know what you're talking about you're, you know sort of the big issues are coming together and if yeah. you have thoughts about it before we spend a lot of time we'd right. love to know okay we did, to your comment on housing, and I just want to make sure we're all on the same page, is we're following your lead. That is not addressed. Housing, short-term housing, is not going to be addressed in this phase mm -hmm. one bylaw. It, it's just too, well, we need to follow you. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're appreciative of the task force being set up <coughs> and that sort of being the lead, if you will. Uh, we, we are definitely engaged in, in that with, with um, Katie and Mary. Uh, so we're watching and listening, but we're not addressing housing specifically in the rewrite now, phase one. Other than where we zone housing. Well, yeah, yeah we're zoning, yeah, but not, we're but not, not the whole, lot of the finer issues, it. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you get the political hot potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. yeah. <laughs> Well, just a curiosity, how often are you meeting in person or on Zoom with SE? We just had our kickoff meeting. Just we just signed the contract. What, so what, what was the plan on you know how you were going to meet with them? Well, it's going to be by Zoom. Um, 
They're looking at the documents right now, and then we're going to be following up with them and set the schedule going forward. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering if it would be helpful uh, for us to work with Neil on just setting up a tentative agenda with sure. that April backstop and then working backwards as to when conceivably we would uh, be having a, a meeting uh, with you and, uh, and the, in the public meetings. Um, and then also, uh, you gave us some some homework to to look over the work that you've already done. So, I appreciate that. He'll have the Thank schedule, you. and you're going to keep coming. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be able to get that too, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I also have to say, I did run into Billy last weekend, just literally out counting trees on the sidewalk. So the work is we really hit the ground running. <laughs> we do we 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 do a lot of uh, on the ground research. Yeah. Martha and I did one time and grabbed the list and was like, "Everyone's town. welcome in my driveway." I've got a lot of good density <laughs> examples. And it is a really good thing. exercise to just literally walk down and look at what's going on, mm -hmm. house by house, structure by structure. It's eye opening. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mary. Love really doing something. Like that. Next up, we have a request for ARPA funding from the Senior Center. Hello. Um, I'm Marie White. I'm the treasurer at the Senior Center. Um, so my, so many volunteer activities. Um, do you want me to just to go through what we've requested? Is that how you can you kind of explain what we're requesting and why? Um, yeah, maybe just a quick overview as to okay. why the kitchen needs upgrade. Okay, so um, the, the most important part is our, our stove ventilation system. Is that, code? Uh -huh. that is for the fire, fire marshal. Um, as far as I know, it, it ventilates out to the side and it's supposed to go out and up. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a big piece of it. The hood is not wide enough to cover the stove. And there's also no fire suppression system in this thing. So that's, you know, that's huge, obviously. The other three are old appliances. So we've been in our current space since the mid-90s. Um, the biggest concern right now is our commercial dishwasher. We have been piecing it together with Band-Aids for several years, and you keep thinking this is the last Band-Aid. It's, you know, right now it's not working. We're waiting for a $500 part. We keep putting money into it. We, we got to stop. Um, the other appliances are just, they're very old. They're like 25, 30 years old. So we really need to do an upgrade. Um, you know, most of our money is just the donations and everything we get is for operating budget just to do what we do. Um, this is kind of outside of that. Um, so um, it's basically good in a nutshell. Okay, great. And then maybe if we could go through the uh, the, very, well, the six or well, five different uh, pieces on the uh, puzzle. Um, so the first is, is a comp company called NevTech. They would actually put in the hood, new hood in the back of the system. And the first one is the um, the stove hood and the ventilation system. That's the biggest piece. They would have to redo the whole uh, ventilation system, like I said, going out and up. And um, Justin also told me that it requires a one inch air gap on the back wall. I have no idea what that means, but that requires a general contractor. And I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, something that we need um, to get into um, into code. Yeah, you need to be able to service it, so you need that gap to get your hand in. <laughs> the um, so that's the biggest piece of it. They would have to take out all the existing uh, ventilation that the, the stove put in. The fire suppression system. I don't know exactly what that means, but is what they put in it. So now, if there's a fire that goes up, it just goes up. And of course, we have housing above us too. So that's yeah, that's yeah, huge. Yeah. Um, like I said, our, our dishwasher right now is not even working. Um, it's probably at least 20 years old, if not more. Um, the other two appliances, they're working, they're fine, but they're just old, you know, they're going to be you know, too. So the biggest, the biggest piece, obviously, is the, the stove hood and the fire suppression. That's the, the safety issue there. Have you gotten multiple um, bids 
from different contract, like different, we, we uh, you know, restaurant supply places? Um, for the appliances, no, we haven't, but we would if we, had, if we need to. There aren't very many companies that would install the stove, but NevTech is one of the, the ones that does it. Um, the senior center in, I think, Northville just had the same work done. Um, mm -hmm. and use that tag. And so there's not that many places that do things like that. Um, but I don't know about the fire suppression unit. But we would, you know, if we need to get more bids, of course we will. Um, I don't know how many there are in the market that do this. There are a bunch of them in the are Burlington. They? In the Burlington. I know because my uh, old roommate used to be in kitchen su supply kind of stuff. And I, you know, it's like everything. It's probably been a contraction in a number of years, but there, there are, there, I know there are several of them that I can think of off the top and, of And, you know, we head. may reach out to, you know, um, you know, restaurateurs in, in town. We don't know. We, you know, we're, you know, just feeding seniors. We don't want to think about commercial kitchens or right. where to go to. So we obviously need help to, you know, get, get different goods and, um, you know, reach out to. There's a few people around here that can, you know, yeah, my, guys. my other question is, how does this all affect with your landlord? Do they? Well, they're the ones they brought it to us in the first place. They brought it to our attention about the hood. But obviously, we would need their approval to do all this work. And we haven't gone that far because we don't have right now. We don't have the money to do this. So um, you know, we didn't want to get ahead of ourselves and ask for permission. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So they wouldn't provide any assistance with fit up and stuff like that. Well, I don't know, but it's Down Street housing. It's, uh, it's Down Street this year. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Never heard of that. I know, I know. But we would definitely go to them and make sure everything is, you know, on all permits that we need to do. Yeah. Um, we just haven't started any of that because we don't have money. Mm -hmm. did it. Um, I'm curious. I know right now donations are just covering operating costs. And I'm curious if there is a, a plan for special fundraising efforts for this or if you have the human resources to we run a campaign. Thought about that. Well, I've been thinking about it. We would we would definitely do a capital campaign. My concern with a capital campaign is people donate to that. They don't always donate to your operating your mm -hmm. annual campaign. Our operating budget is what we need to. Um, so that would be a difficult, you know, way to go. I mean, of course, we would try if we have to um, do what we need to do. But you know, our fundraising now is just to keep us going. Mm -hmm. um, we do you were, have folks who are able to or experienced or have looked into uh, either foundational grants or state grants that would might help? Well, we, we thought about state grants. Tom came over to see us when we first got here and suggested the Vermont community something or other. And then yeah. we were going to apply and we missed the first deadline. And when I asked a second time, he said, like, no, it's, it's like over two hundred fifty thousand dollars or something, so mm -hmm. we were way below that. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge you can apply. The challenge is the administratively, it's very really difficult. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to apply unless you're going for a much bigger amount. And we we do mm -hmm. need to look into more grants and you know, you know different opportunities. Um, you know, we still don't have a director. We're mm -hmm. trying. We're starting up again. We're going to do the search again. Um, has to be dedicated to you know looking to you know grants. Um, the board does what we can, but we all kind of. In separate ways and you know volunteer boards are um, but we absolutely um, I think with the appliances you know we, we definitely need to you know to replace those you know the other the top two are a safety issue yes mm -hmm. but we can still operate with you know what we have now we have been for 25 years so um, you know we'll do what we can uh, okay um, I wanted to answer your questions to her because I can I've worked in restaurants my entire life. Nav tech systems are the best in the business. <laughs> oh, I know they're, they're yeah. a good company. Um, and then the fire suppression system will be Ansel. It doesn't matter who installs it, it will still cost the same amount. It is just the one company that makes the fire suppression systems for hoods. Um, I can't speak on the Blodgett or Vulcan uh, systems because you can get convection ovens, any brand. Um, but yeah, NevTech and the Ansel system, the fire suppression are probably, regardless of who you go to, going to cost that exact same amount or more. <laughs> Thanks, Kane. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but Blodgett is like top of the line. <laughs> top of the line convection up. Yeah. We use it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, he I'm always very hesitant to um, take, take more on, but I 
Um, I don't have an, oh, I do have your email here. I'll send you an email. So professionally, I'm a fundraiser, and I do a lot of grant writing, and I, I know that there's money for this in the world. So I, I will, yeah. So, um, so I'll send you an email. I mean, we can just have a phone call, and I'll see what I can do to at least identify some, and then maybe some That's folks where we can don't do the writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any other comments from the board? Um, you know, I, Justin did a great presentation here. Uh, I forget whether it was six months ago or what, but uh, you're doing a tremendous service for a lot of residents, uh, not only in Waterbury, but in the broader community. Um, and I think we probably want to help you. Um, as we said earlier, uh, when Karen was up here, we haven't really decided how we're going to just what the process is going to be for distributing the ARPA funds this year mm -hmm. and I think we do need to, to figure that out uh, so I appreciate your your patience with us uh, if we don't decide to uh, move the money tonight mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, I'm certainly sympathetic to your needs and, and understand that's a priority for you thank you oh yeah uh, I would like to uh, just speak one last time probably lobbying for the senior center and the ARPA funds at this point but as I understand ARPA funds I don't I, I think on our on the alley project it felt questionable because it wasn't directly impacting people right then but I feel like making sure that the senior center's kitchen works is a direct impact on people like right as it like right when that project is finished and I feel like at the heart of the American Rescue Plan, like sits like the need to help people and seniors need to eat. Mm -hmm. and I feel like funding or partially funding this project is exactly what that money is meant for. Do you care to make a motion? I move to approve the request for ARPA funds from the Waterbury Senior Center. I would suggest if, if you're going to move that, um, Putting a, a dollar amount right. in oh. motion and, and rounding it to something. Like a six zero figure? Yeah. Can you round up? That's great. <laughs> and, then round up. and then we could just reimburse them for invoices up to that amount. And if it goes over, they'd have to fundraise or come back to you again. But... OK, I will remake my motion. <laughs> uh, I move to approve the ARPA request for the from the senior center for the amount of Sixty thousand dollars. Up to up to sixty thousand dollars. Got it. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. We have a motion moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Mike. As much as I'm very supportive of the senior center, um, we provide a lot of support to them. I do think maybe a portion of, of this request should be coming from them in some sort of fundraising, you know, and, and should we be looking at a full $60,000? Just my thought. Yeah, I think um, Maureen makes a good point, though, uh, that uh, the way in which we've su been supporting them has been through operational funding. This is more of a capital campaign. Um, uh, if there are other ways to raise capital quickly, <laughs> <It's not quick. laughs> that's, that is sort of the, the point that it's I think Kate quick. was making yeah. is that uh, whatever it is is, is not going to be quick. Uh, meals do have to be prepared. Uh, <coughs> basis uh, daily basis um, and uh, so um, uh, I, I'm personally a little bit torn just because we do have this process issue uh, on the other hand I'm fine waiting if you guys want to like I'm not to vote tonight I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just thrilled that you're considering mm -hmm. it okay. another thought is that you know the things that are out of code and direct safety issues are those top two items that could be considered emergent um, where the other items might be able to wait for things like, you know, sourcing outside funding. Um, so it might, you know, be a some but not all solution to solve some really important problems. Right, right, right. 
So I, I love that. I just yeah, have to yeah, say, yeah, yeah. I would, with no reservation, vote. I mean, would, I support all of it with no, again, for Roger, it's really a technicality mm -hmm. around that. I, I feel challenging that we said no to RW on the grounds of process and then to vote on something tonight does yeah. give me pause, but I think the ventilation and fire suppression, I do feel so. emergent in a different way, so. Both of those quotes we received in March and they <clears> expired <throat> 30 days, so sure. they are not current quotes on, you know, I, you know, like to, if we could get somebody back, I don't want to put it down. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing to think about is like, it's, you're, they're just in a really bad position without a director. They just don't have the human resources to be self-sustaining in this moment. And the hope, of course, is that that's solved, you know, that there is. And, and just so you know, last year we actively looked all year with yeah. two different candidates that we went through the whole process and both turned us down for very different reasons. You know, one wanted to come to Waterbury from Massachusetts and couldn't find <laughs> housing. Um, so we, we, we tried. Yeah, we we can sympathize as a town, right. continually right. trying to hire. Exactly. So we so I, we are trying yeah. very hard to, um, yeah. you know. That was more just um, not, not a criticism, but an understanding that like, you know, there are times when you're not self-sustaining because you just don't have the resources that you need, but that might not be indicative of what it's gonna look like in a year or two or three down the line. Uh, Mike. I agree with Alyssa's comments. I have no problem with the first two items approving those. The others are, you know, kitchen equipment. And I do think if you kind of shop that those around, you, you, you might have some savings. And that's why I was a little hesitant to go to that. Right. And those aren't emer emergency needs. Well, the dishwasher is, we don't have them right now. <laughs> right. Um, but the dishwasher, that is, we did get several quotes on dishwashers from you know, okay. different, and so that was kind of the middle of the road one that we just, like, just put on here, just to put okay. it up or down. Mm -hmm. So we definitely will look at, you know, what is the right dishwasher to get, and you know, just to make sure that you know, um, we will look around, and shop around. And, um, so based on the discussion that I've heard, would anyone care to make a friendly amendment to the uh, motion uh, and cut the figure down to $30,000? I'd be glad to make a friendly amendment to put, well, it's 21, 25, say $26,000 now, and they could come back with, you know, if they have some additional things on the you know, more of the kitchen equipment, not the fire suppression and ventilation stuff. And we would very much entertain, you know, if you have some bids, that, that amount. But for right now, that's, those are immediate needs. And I think, you know, we should approve those. Okay, we have a, a, a motion to amend the motion. Do I have a second on that? Second. Okay, that's seconded. <laughs> Any further discussion on that? We're voting on the amendment. All in favor say aye. Change of time. Yes. <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The motion is now amended uh, to uh, approve up to $26,000 for uh, the request from the senior center. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations. <laughs> So what do I need to do just to give you the, a new bid? And, you know, I want to say just, maybe follow up with Tom. Yeah. And right. Help follow to find that next time. Yeah. Just bring the invoices. Yeah, get some invoices. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll thank you. be in touch with all OK. Uh, update on the charger. On that one? Uh, no. We have a memo, or I can send an email. Okay. You email me something about the charter? Uh oh. Local Sorry. office <laughs> tax and manager reporting memo? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where's that? It was in our email. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't click it. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I definitely read it in my email. If that's the yeah, worst thing, I'll have to say it right now. Can you provide a brief synopsis, Tom? If I can steal Alyssa's real quick. <laughs> so the brief synopsis on the local option tax is that I, I researched uh, all the communities that had one and was surprised um, to learn that um, 
they seem to fall into three buckets, um, roughly about a third of each community falling into each one. Um, some communities have no policy. Um, Stowe and Essex City, City of Essex Junction, just had theirs passed and adopted. And their logic was to reduce the burden on property taxpayers, but they didn't have any policy at the select board level or at town meeting day approved by the voters about how exactly those funds are spent. General revenue. Um, a number of towns have uh, select board policies, uh, which means they can be amended by the select board at any time um, and allocate them into fairly distinct buckets. Um, some towns went so far as to have charter language that specifically says how the funds are spent. Um, so you, you have the array of choices. Um, mm -hmm. There's, I, I mentioned um, when we started the charter research process that there's no model town. Yeah. Um, and it's the same way with the local option tax. So I looked at some of the examples and came up with some thoughts about uh, some buckets, because I do think a policy is, a select board level policy is generally advisable. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of, of the budget and what, if, 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 L, if LOT funds would be allocated towards the budget, I'd recommend allocating them towards um, recurring expenses to reduce them. So debt service and capital expenses, which in effect can reduce the tax rate. Mm -hmm. um, then, the, then based on some select board input, the um, other big bucket I came up with was uh, economic development and community of vitality. Uh, so that can be funding related to revitalizing Waterbury, concerts in the park, public art, various town events, um, and affordable housing which I think is both economic development and community vitality combined. Um, I also wrote a blurb about uh, streamlining and modernizing municipal operations, including any one-time costs. Uh, that might be an investment to get longer-term efficiency. So uh, sitting in my seat, that oftentimes means a technology investment. Um, that, that could also mean an investment related to municipal consolidation. Um, then there's one area where I, I recommended actually some specificity in a policy. Um, so we have, I don't have 2022 numbers yet, but I should any day, but in 2021, uh, the town had fund balance of about 2.7 million. Fund balance can be thought of as retained earnings, um, but that falls into different buckets, some of which are clearly defined about how we can spend those, um, but the undesignated fund balance is uh, in a negative position. So my recommendation is if you have a local option tax um, to put a portion of that towards the undesignated fund balance. Um, so it's money that in essence uh, is cash um, that just stays with the town towards its bottom line. So you would budget it as a revenue, but budget it as an expense, front pocket to back pocket, if you will. Uh, or in essence not budgeted, um, which would have the same net effect. But curing that deficit without going back to the voters on town meeting day would be pretty useful. Um, <clears throat> then the other piece is, and this also pertains to the fund balance, if you don't have a policy that says what happens to unallocated local option taxes, they automatically just fall into that undesignated bucket. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a policy that uh, is clear, those funds could be, uh, according to your policy, tracked and reserved in a separate bucket, if you will. And so your, your finances would show that as a separate category, and that could be useful when making longer term investment decisions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just becomes part of the whole. Right. And, and I... Um, that's the most transparent way to track it also. So that's a recommendation of mine um, when it comes to the LOT funds. Um, the other question I was tasked with was the manager appointing, uh, hiring all town employees. Um, and there's, again, there's an array of options in various towns and, and, and how, they, how they choose things. But the, uh, the themes I found, um, 
is that, and the practice we have now is uh, the manager, and, and I think the past practice, uh, with the exception of those positions in state law, the manager hires, fires, gives raises, and all those things. And the manager checks in with the select board at his or her discretion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that generally works. Um, <coughs> what, I, what I suggest you consider, what I think is reasonable is for department head positions, in a lot of charters, there's, a, there's in essence a check-in provision with the select board where uh, the manager gives a name to the select board and the select board either uh, formally approves it um, or in some cases tells the manager to go back and bring a different name. Um, in no instance that I found that if the select board isn't happy with the person nominated for the position that they get to pick their own. Mm -hmm. um, but I think having some sort of check-in for the most important positions is pretty reasonable. Department um, heads, yeah. Department heads. And, and the example I gave is Stowe, which Stowe has a Stowe manager when hiring a department head, grades a position before the select board. The select board has seven days to object, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty reasonable. Um, and, and if there's no objection, the manager can hire. Mm -hmm. That's probably especially critical given that, um, in theory, a public works director could be jointly employed. So having a check in here with the other board would also be handy. Mm -hmm. So that's a, the sum of uh, the sum of the major issues. Melissa. Well, just to state explicitly, I think this was implied in your point of there are obviously some positions like Clark that is elected here, but others that are currently specified in state statute. But is it, I guess, putting my cards on the table, I think things like the planning and zoning director and zoning assistant board, the goal is to put those under the manager, which we have the ability to do through this. Right. No, it's not currently. Just mostly stating that for the record. Okay. Mike. Is there a reason for seven days? I, I know we we typically not going to object to any of your you know appointments, but especially when we meet, you know, it's if, you know if there was some sort of thing, it would probably require some sort of a, a short notice special meeting of the select board because I assume we can't do that in, in any other way. Seven days was just an example. Okay. And so, like an objection wouldn't necessarily be a full board objection. It would just be somebody writing, emailing you back, or what have you, saying, "I have questions or concerns." The process isn't outlined in the charters, mm -hmm. but in theory, I would forward you a name. Uh, that's still a private process, right? So, if there's objections, and it wouldn't even mean a majority vote necessarily. If if one select board, if the select board chair, for example, strongly objects to that person being hired for some reason. It's unlikely it would move forward, even if the rest of the select board, I, I would strive for, you know, unanimous consent in that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, again. Can you just clarify the difference between a quote select board policy and a town policy the select board adopts? I'm just trying to come to an analogy. Like I know the town has a cash management policy we had to adopt. Is this, I'm just thinking about like, in theory, that could vary with each new board, is that correct? But the goal, I guess the thought or intent would be it's set by a select board, but the thought that it would be maintained, but for good reason. Right. And I, I think that's advisable over a policy adopted by the voters um, because circumstances change. Mm -hmm. Go back yeah. in the last 15 years, we had a financial crisis. We've exploded. <clears throat> uh, people weren't talking about affordable housing um, in the same magnitude just a few years ago. Um, so I think priorities can shift pretty quickly, and I think we want to shift with that. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say my my only hesitation, my only hold up about explicitly select board language is that um, you know a future select board in twenty years, it's just you know, for example, was like, well, let's. Let's pull all this money out of reducing the tax rate and put it all in, you know, parades. You know, like <laughs> it's just an example. But uh, my concern would be that a select board at a future date might take what 
mon the money that we've been using through the local option tax to invest in our community and use it for something else. Um, so using the, you know, like charter language, I would support a measure more that use charter language to explicitly say like, this is either going to the general fund or this is going to this economic development fund um, because then it can't be changed at the drop or, you know, a vote one night where they, we really want to increase our fireworks budget, you know, like, <laughs> well, it's just my concern. Yeah, um, I'll just answer that in saying that uh, you know, the, the select board is responsive to uh, the voters of the town. Right. And uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. Waterbury has a tradition of being a deliberative body. Um, and I'm not sure we want to hem ourselves into the conditions of today where there could be a, a problem down the road that we don't foresee. Sure. Mm -hmm. Not for nothing, it would also involve engaging with the legislature again if we want to change our charter, which is a not quick process. <laughs> on my other, I guess I would say I hear you. I think I would echo Roger's point and also say that like we talked about like new boards. I mean, we have three seats open in a year for election. We have three three year staggered terms. So I would say to the extent there's some modicum of continuity. I'm not disputing that you could have a scenario as you're <coughs> you know, deciding, but I think my goal would be that we create a policy a future board would want to uphold because it's working well and gives them both clear parameters and the ability to be flexible. Sure. The, the other piece I'd add is from a practical perspective, what most towns wind up doing with their local option tax and a, a good chunk of it is they go to the voters and they say, we want to we want to buy this for four million dollars we're going to service the debt with local option tax and then a portion of it is essentially locked in for that use for the period of the debt which is usually you know if it's a road or a bridge project we're going to say you know two hundred thousand dollars a year for 20 years so in effect you're binding future boards that way sure okay mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we have a motion to uh, direct the town manager to draft uh, a uh, charter uh, based on the recommendations presented tonight. I would move that. My only question being, are we doing a proposal for a breakdown of spending or an outline? I guess I still have a question around, is the mechanism percent of hypothetical local option tax we're assigning to buckets? And if so, what are those percentages? I guess that I would love to have a little more discussion about. I agree with the general okay. proposal to have a select board yeah. policy and, and the general categories presented herein. Um, but guess would just that would be my one question. Or I think we need to have more discussion now about what those amounts are. Um, well, I'm just wondering, do we need to, if, if the percentages are not going to go into the charter itself, and it's going to be mm -hmm. part of the select board policy, could we then debate the policy once we get Thank the draft charter? Good, good clarification. I was totally off. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so I will move to instruct the manager to um, research, draft, develop a draft charter language that allow, would allow for a select board policy for spending of local option tax and the authority of manager to appoint, suspend, and terminate employees as outlined in this memo. <laughs> So sorry, so sorry. I will say it again, looking up and not muttering to myself, Karen. Take two on the motion. So sorry. Um, OK, so recording. I'm moving that we um, instruct the municipal manager to draft potential charter language based on the June 2nd memo about local option tax and manager authority, and specifically that the draft charter language would allow for a select board policy to be finalized and debated and discussed at a later date about how the local option tax revenue is spent. You just really spat out there. Okay, <laughs> And the stuff about and managers hiring and, the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and all the yeah. other stuff. I'm trying. I can just take it extrapolated from the memo. I, <laughs> I, that how about, you can, how about this, you can cut it out based on the uh, June 2nd. As outlined. Memo. As outlined. June 2nd. As outlined. I, I, I second Alyssa's eloquent motion. I'm doing my best. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, any further discussion? <laughs> Oh, wait, was it seconded? Yes, second yes, second yes Mike seconded it. Ah, thank you. He also said it was eloquent. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do they know this? The eloquent. Oh, the the eloquent in the room. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? Tom, do you know what your homework <laughs> is after that match? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Follow Thanks. the Thanks. elephant direction. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Um, we have the Town <coughs> Housing Task Force update. Do you want to start? Uh, you, you start and I will follow okay. up. Okay. <laughs> well, I asked in part because Kane attended, so the group met. Um, we have settled on a regular meeting date, which will be the third Thursday of the month, 6 to 8 p.m. Um, was great to get everyone back together. I guess I would say the high level takeaways for this group, um, we did actually, and I have extra copies because I have all my materials here, um, discuss kind of the initial potential action items the group had developed at the first meeting and what potential next steps were for moving forward. Um, takeaways for this group, I would say in general, the group supported having a very encompassing view of housing. So candidly, on the agenda, we had everything from what we heard with this group here around short-term rentals to homelessness and just recognizing that we don't have groups necessarily leading on those right now. So given that we had this group, it made sense to have them be a group thinking about those issues. Um, the conclusion of the group is that we needed more information to do that work. Um, so at our next meeting, we're looking at creating a version of what's called a housing needs assessment which looks at what housing currently exists in Waterbury, conversations we've had around, is there rentals? How many rentals? What type of rentals? How much do they cost? Mm -hmm. um, essentially, before creating an intervention, we want to know like what is the need? Do we need a lot more one-bedroom apartments? Do we need a lot more single-family houses? Do we need both? Um, and so there was support for the group in doing some surveying around that and needs and desires of the community. So we are working on that um, and working on drafting questions for the next meeting. Sure. I think that was all I had. Um, I will just shamelessly, because we are the psych board, say potentially there was discussion of how that would be distributed and potentially a minor cost around if it was something, again, we wanted mm -hmm. to mail. Um, so obviously we didn't have a budget for any of that up front, but I do, in fairness, want to say that to all the board members. To me, if there's a way to do it, it could be worthwhile. I'll say just personally, there's the balance between some suggested like having a UVM student do it as their capstone project and having it done really quickly. <laughs> and then what is the, the healthy balance um, there? Mm -hmm. But I say Kane was there. And I was. was uh, no, I, I definitely, uh, some of the ideas that were thrown around like mailers to, to every resident of Waterbury to ask them what they pay in rent, uh, I was in support of. Um, and then there were some really healthy discussions surrounding um, homelessness and inconvenient enough, um, the, the homeless, the talk of homelessness now hadn't started when we had the meeting. Um, so it's a whole new uh, venue that's opened up. Um, and then we talked about, we spent a good long time talking about short-term rentals and um, the things um, that the folks on the task force think are important um, when it comes to rental housing and property ownership. But one of the, the other things I think capture, I'm just one reviewing our minutes, which are posted on the website, and we do have a page, just so you all know, um, uh, was around to capturing folks who like might not live in Waterbury currently, but want to live in Waterbury. So a piece of the survey was also potentially around employees in Waterbury, just mm. recognizing like we as a select board obviously have the constituency of folks living here, but particularly with housing, again, as we heard tonight, and we know there's folks who are trying to move to our community but can't, and so how are we capturing their thoughts and inputs um, in any sort of survey or data work we do? Are you, may I ask a question? Are you yeah, doing, um, do you have a hybrid option available for your meetings? Are you we have in your, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, with the owl. I'll check the agenda. Mike. 
I know Kane mentioned this very briefly, um, you know, talked about homelessness, but we've just passed the time that the, the hotel voucher system has happened. Have you discussed how the impacts of that will affect our community? I know it's really early now to, to know that, but I don't know if you discuss that pending problem. Well, listen, I can speak on that if you'd like, or Yeah, can. go ahead. Um, when we were talking about it, we were talking about the um, impending doom, as the news networks have been putting it. Um, and we, we actually discussed it at great length and kind of came to the conclusion that cities like Barrie, Montpelier, Burlington are all going to be imp uh, impacted disproportionately, whereas we don't offer the same service, as a town, we don't offer the same services, we don't have a hospital here, we don't, you know, we don't have a homeless shelter, um, so we social might... Social service. Or social services service that would, that would, yep, that would deal with homelessness, so even if or when or now that we have um, houseless individuals, um, the general consensus was they were would just be passing through uh, on their way to a place that has services that can help them. Um, but you know, nobody can see the future. So we'll see, but. Uh, Alyssa. And just two minor points that stuck out for me. I agree completely with that overall assessment of like, we felt like it, again, is more likely to be concentrated elsewhere was that um, those, Relationships are important, so they talked about a lot of the service providers really being at capacity, but in other communities, they're really helping to lead response and be a network. And I know Danny has shared some potential resources, but just like we are where we are today, but in terms of future thinking, like how do we have or establish those relationships so that when situations like this happen, we as a municipality have relationships with those folks to say like, are you seeing needs? Do we need support? So just noting that like, Again, kind of no fault of everyone, but just some communities already have really strong existing relationships with those folks. Certainly they provide services in Waterbury and we know of them, but I would just say we haven't historically, I don't think, had them. Um, and then also just talking about like ultimately housing supply is really important. So doing work about what we're doing of it's not gonna be solved tomorrow, but that, that is a really important long-term solution around creating systemic change. Um, it's a really tough issue because like right now, both the affordable housing coalition and the homeless, you know, they don't kind of get talking about possibly merging those two organizations together. And, you know, you've seen some people leave and stuff like that. And they were a real voice for, you know, both the housing population and the homeless population. And it's going to be, I think, a real challenge. I know we, there are a lot of good, strong, statewide organizations, but those advocacy organizations that bring together coalitions, I think, are going to be missed in this really tough time. Yeah. And my second point that I forgot is I just want to say, also acknowledging that, I would say library employees in particular, we did just talk about, are folks that are already municipal employees that are serving and interacting with folks experiencing homelessness. So to the extent, obviously, we just appointed someone to the library commission, but we're supporting and making sure they have the resources they need. They were the ones who, um, had the most to contribute in terms of that like current status question kind of in the community. Right. Just a question. I mean, it seems as though you've got a fairly broad perspective. Um, and I'm just wondering if you have uh, the direction and the means to, to, to set goals and accomplishment, accomplish them, uh, or are you there? at that stage yet? It's a good question. I mean, I would say candidly, again, we just heard from a volunteer board receiving some staff report support and it's still challenging. So I don't want to be um, misrepresentative of it as an all volunteer committee doing our best. And I would say, so to the extent like help and support would be welcomed and it could be more formalized. Um, you know, it was our second meeting. So to the extent right. it felt like Get, gathering this data was an important, I will say that maybe is kind of part of why the group landed on this data of just saying before we're creating a punch list prioritization mm -hmm. project things, folks felt like 
you know, we provided a constellation of updates on everything from 51 South Main Street to Stanley Wasson, but right. kind of how to engage and where to support or the zoning rewrite. Um, people felt like they kind of wanted a little more grounding in like, what are the biggest barriers right now in Waterbury? Um, okay. But I would say, but also like we welcome support. I mean, I'll say like on the homelessness issue, I was like, if anyone has ideas, let me know. I can kind of. Yeah, with this brand new task force solves housing and homelessness in Waterbury, I, you know, <laughs> fantastic work. Uh, I guess one thought that came to my mind is that the, the state has been working on this issue for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Forever. <laughs> Yeah, but they should have a certain amount of data with which they're working, uh, for one. Uh, so we, we may have some statewide data that would inform the situation in Waterbury to a certain extent. And then uh, also, uh, I would have to expect that uh, the legislature is, has got some intent uh, moving forward. Now, they may not all agree, um, but we may want to ask our representatives uh, if they could help us address some of these issues to understand where they see the state coming, where the state's dropping the ball, frankly, uh, and uh, any recommendations coming from them about where the town's position needs to be given the situation uh, with state policy. would give a house, healthy yes and to data, which is just say the state absolutely has it. Housingdata.org is a Vermont website run by Vermont Housing Finance Agency, mm -hmm. and it's reliant on census data, American Community Survey estimates, which I think are listing like $900 as the average rent in Waterbury. Uh -huh. You've been on front porch forum, that may sound a little off. Um, and actually we did also talk about what data we might have locally just through like, have we chatted with the listers, have we chatted with Karen about like, do you have a list of what properties, you know, have apartments before? So I completely agree. We should look at what we have um, before spending more time on something we have. And I will say even the state in kind of best practices for housing task forces encourages collecting local data just because they know there are limitations. Um, and also we mentioned representatives because I agree. Okay. And you know, I think um, we we did a survey uh, last year on how to spend the ARPA funding, which I thought was largely successful. Uh, so I think that uh, we will get a fairly good response if we do a survey. And I, I mm -hmm. would think that the select board would be willing to support uh, the, the the costs of that, which are not terrible but a lot of money. And of note, in that survey, a large amount of people expressed housing as one of their main areas of wanting ARPA funds to go through. And so perhaps um, perhaps there's a budget that we create from ARPA funds for the first year or first two years of the housing task force, because we know there will be needs, there will be funding needs. So just a, a thought of like how to actively and immediately use use it would be, I assume, a relatively small amount of ARPA funding directly in the way that the surveys um, responded. So just something to put on the back burner. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Two yeah. questions, but just Shoot. Um, I, I, re I recall uh, vaguely the process that you went through this to choose the members of the housing committee. Do you know if any of them are landlords? I don't know. I was just curious. And I also just want to remind you that when we did the survey last year, we did it to households. So yes, it was, thank you. Which would not be as relevant for the survey. Yeah. So would you would want to, if you're going to do it to the voter checklist, mm -hmm. um, it would double, double the budget. Yeah. Okay. And you'd probably want to have either myself or another staff member that had some time to pare it down so you're not mailing a survey to me and my husband. Right. But, but, you know, thank yeah. you, and that's a great. Um, someone who's been in the housing world for eight, eight gleams, um, to me, the biggest impact that our dollars, I don't know how much of a particular project or something, but to me, the most critical thing is the zoning issue. You know, if we don't tackle zoning where we can create additional zoning units, uh, create the means to renovate existing units, 
we're not going to do what you know because again it's so ex expensive to you know you look at 51 main street the cost i don't know if we could do major projects within our community i think if if you get the development community where there was sufficient support to create housing i think there is there is the means to do something so to me that's at least my opinion would be the way to create housing in this community i think it's greatly needed and has the uh, the rewrite on the uh zoning uh are being completed is is that in a state that could be reviewed by uh that's what we're working on the sc group okay but i think also if what we heard today most of it's going to be like on this side of the interstate not that saying that's not something that's workable but on the other side of the interstate there's a lot of a little bit more open land which might potentially be available to create some you know housing projects and mm -hmm. i don't know it's just you know it, there's something that we we need to create the ability with some town support, I think it's good that we would support any housing development because I know sometimes if you have a developer and they're looking at some sort of key resource that we could be a part, I think that's where our money is best spent. But I don't think, you know, the town's going to want to be ourselves a developer. But maybe I'm mis misguided. No, and I think that was a point actually someone on the committee made just about kind of this larger idea about coordination and how does conservation and land use planning and all of right. these things tie together. So I think, yes, absolutely, it needs to be holistic. I would say if you see particular <coughs> barriers around really specific zoning, I'm sure that's something the Planning Commission would love to hear about while recognizing we just heard pretty strongly about their right. current scope of work and capacity. Yeah. Um, but. Yes. All right. Any further action needed at this time? I would say we'll plan. Maybe should we in July, first meeting in July, come back after that next meeting around survey stuff, hopefully. You're good on the timelines. I appreciate your when, what, when's the next deliverable yeah. <laughs> so we can have an update on, on what survey looks like uh, right. first meeting in July. Yeah, yeah. If we can figure out how much it would cost, we can move forward from there. We should have a reasonable estimate because of the last yeah. one we did. Plus, yeah, so <clears throat> the, but the list is going to be uh, considerably larger. Yeah, I can definitely pull some information off the voter checklist. I'll need you to give me some direction. Well, that's, I'm saying, I think, number. <laughs> no, I think the next step is someone needs to have a conversation with you about, Karen, what would this look like? Yeah, and how long yeah we, we, can, we can pull the invoice that Roger uh, yeah, received. Yeah, with and, the, the group and Barry. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Which they, they did a very uh, Yeah, they, they did, did all the which yep. was, they mailed it. They like, did it all, which was great. And then we also might want to consider uh, something online uh, yeah. to yeah. supplement the uh, the mailing. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other further discussion on this topic? Right. Hearing none, we can move on to next agenda, next meeting agenda. And Karen provided us with this on the. Uh, draft agenda already. Uh, so we would have the consent agenda, the minutes, uh, and then uh, ordinance review, uh, vendor entertainment and parade. So on this topic, that's these are the ones that we had discussed and that Tom and I worked a little bit on together. So I didn't have notes on any other ordinances that we were thinking about reviewing, but one came up earlier that I can't recall if that was, well, parking and noise are in the parking lot. There are no parking or noise ordinances in the town. Those have been on the parking lot for two entire years, so. Yeah. Are you, you referring to earlier tonight? Or yeah, earlier tonight, but unfortunately, the note that I wrote down was simply other ordinances. 
So I can't recall yeah. when it came up. Well, we were, do you remember that? Right. It might have been regarding Hope Davy. It was Tom Scribner's act. But I can't remember what the, oh, or enforcement. enforcement. Insurance. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yeah. liability. Yes. Liability. So is that something that we... It's not an ordinance issue. Right. Okay. You know, it could be in a policy. For sure. Yeah. So that's on your yes. active yeah, right. list. Is that true already? Do you need help and support? I can get I can get to have one done. Um, and then as it pertains to lots of tonight's conversation, whether it's next meeting or not, thinking about our next discussion for ARPA processes. Yeah, I think we should add that one. And then it, you know, in that vein, is there anything that we should do independently to come prepared for that conversation next meeting? Um, maybe we could review the, uh, uh, the survey results uh, on uh, the direction from the from the I can, re I can resend that. Okay. And maybe and your... Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, and the budget spreadsheet that we yep. last updated. And the town meeting report that had the breakdown of like what we did and why, just in terms of contextualizing um, from last but, year. Sorry. I don't know if this has to be on the next agenda, but I've noticed, you know, the sheriff's been patrolling <coughs> Stowe Street. Is is there a pl plan for how they're going to be deployed? You know, we heard someone talk about Howard Howard Street. Yeah. Howard Howard Ave. Howard Ave. Right. So they're responsive. So if there's community complaints, I can get them. I can get it to them, and they can. Change so, how they self deploy, if you will. So they were on a kind of an as need basis? <laughs> yes, I don't have the direct authority to say go here, but I can say <coughs> when time permits, try to focus your energies in these areas, and they're very yeah. responsive. Are we talking about like, right, you said sheriff, and you're sticking out the Vermont State Police. So the the, the sheriff. Oh, the sheriff has been doing it. That is the sheriff on it. The, the Washington the sheriff. sheriff. I, I saw one day, I think, last week. The same day, he was giving a ticket on Stowe Street, and then when I went home on Neyland Flats, he was sitting on Neyland Flats. Moyle, huh. Moyle County Sheriff. Sure. I could swear I threw a Moyle. I don't know why. <laughs> well, you're in the wrong county. Well, no, because I, I, for the NYPD, we have used Lamoille County Sheriff because I think there's some issue with the Washington County. But that would be a specific like huh. right. contract. Well, right. So I don't. And that's why I could have. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it wasn't the law. Opportunity patrolling? I don't know. Yeah, Mike's not wrong. We were two sheriffs out that morning. I saw them both on my way. Were they Lamoille? Do you yeah, remember they which Shinnecally they were presented? They were Washington and Lamoille. Curious. Yeah, they could have been down here for a special detail. Uh-huh. That's why I was just wondering. Yeah. One, 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 so, I, yeah, so I guess the question is, do we want Tom to call the sheriff and say, hey, what, what are you doing? Or do we have a question about our contract with the Vermont State Police? I think I'm not disputing the question. I just want to know what our Tell practice. the state police to get the sheriff's <laughs> Well, I know the state police chain has all but said they don't have the time to do a lot of speed enforcement. You know, we have heard that multiple times. But, and, and we've talked about a number of times, should we enter into a contract with the sheriff's department? And maybe I was off. I thought I saw it said Lamar, you know, granted I'm driving, you know, driving down the road. I thought it said Lamar County, which just surprised me. Let me ask my friend who got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Let's find out. Not the tickets. Up Maybe there. we don't have to pay them. They'll just come down. I was going to say, take the free service and run. Yeah, if they're strapped for cash. You know. <laughs> yeah, if they want to create some additional, <laughs> welcome to come down to some of our hot spots. Yeah. Well, they don't even have to come yeah, down to Stone Street. Street. They, can stay up, they can stay up on Howard. They don't even have to come all the way down. Right. Um, is Parks planning going to be a July versus a next meeting in July? That's what I mentioned at the meeting last week. July 17th was the proposed uh, presentation by the... Uh, Washington. Washington. <laughs> well, uh, okay. You don't forget it when they're ready to take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. You 
You said it was July 17th, the parks update? Yeah. And that's very tentative. Okay. Just, yes, sir. just an FYI, on the next day of the next meeting, uh, that weekend I have one of my few paid gigs that mm -hmm. I kind of have a responsibility. I should be able to get... You're right, I'm, I'm a weight station captain at the uh, <laughs> for the LCI Derby. We close down. I'm usually here. I have to drop the stuff off at the uh, headquarters. I might be on <coughs> Zoom while my wife drives here, so I, I might be late, but I might not. Better that than the reverse. Right. Just, just She's on Zoom while he drives? <laughs> no, I'll be on Zoom and let her drive. Do zooming while driving. Yeah. No, I don't do that. Okay. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to make friends with the Washington County Sheriff. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. All right, so we added... So we added ARPA uh, process, uh, policy on uh, liability uh, yeah. right. uh, for... For Hope Davy. Hope Davy and Parks, right? Yep. Time. Is it is yeah. now an appropriate time to ask about the first meeting in July? Yes. Because uh, I, and I'm bringing it up not for myself, but there's other staff that are going to be out, and the tax <coughs> rate is going to be need to be done at that meeting. Mm -hmm. So July 4th is on Tuesday. Tuesday. So the offices here will be closed on Tuesday. Are we meeting on Monday? I don't third. care. I will be here, so it doesn't matter to me. <coughs> I don't know Tom's status or any of your statuses for the first oh, week of July. The third's not a holiday. The third's not a holiday. Um, and I don't think we're going to be out of town. So uh, uh, to yeah, but we would already get our fireworks. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Burlington's good. I want to have a recommendation. I will be yeah. virtual, so I can attend, but I will not be in Waterbury. I can also attend on the third. I'll be here. I recommend they do the fifth. But that's my opinion. Ooh, I support Wednesday that. the 5th? We do have yeah, DRB. There are going to be some people that might calendar. have long weekend. DRB already in? That's their standard <coughs> meeting. I have it as a repeat. Unless D they count, cancel it, which they can The smartest is in town. Does DRB? Yeah. Are you? Oh, please send me a link. Who? Does DRB still work name remote? No. No, they come here. No, they come. Here. Here. And that will be that Wednesday? Well, I don't know. I don't want to say June 7th. I don't have it. Yeah. Well, guess I'll go to the circus on the 3rd. Because I, 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 <laughs> I don't want the 5th. It's more that fourth it's there. Oh. The SAR and the SAL, that stuff are phenomenal. Then I guess I'll go on the 6th. <laughs> but they could cancel. That would be a new question, right? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I. I don't know whether you already said something more. Because that's my question. Yeah, I feel like We could just go to the 10th and that's Monday. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can go to our website. Oh, but Especially because we're going to be here meeting for the um, inclusion training. Right. We've got to mention that as well. Just to confirm yeah, that everyone's got that on the calendar. July, yeah. 20, 27, 28. So when we are. 27. I thought it's 28. It's 28, 29. Correct. Any minute. I just emailed Mary to confirm it this morning. Did you say July? June. So the inclusion yeah. training is the end of June. June. Yeah. 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 From the calendar for the 29th of June. Okay, good. All right. How about the Which following Monday then? The 10th? The 10th. Right. We do the following Monday. We're kicking the planning right. commission now. Okay. Oh, oh, we're we're probably probably 68, I want to TBD. Probably 6 to 8, I think. I will just say it's all day. Um, Wait, who, you're not here on the third? Who's not here on the third? I can't remember. Okay. You could. Just oh, you could do the third, I suppose. I'm just uh, unsure why we're working to move it if everyone's available. Okay. But if there's a problem, then I'm fine with adjusting. But if there's not a problem, then there's nothing to solve. Yeah. I mean, or we do the fifth. Yeah. I don't want that. I mean, it's just my recurring <laughs> monthly on the first Wednesday. Oh. Okay. Or fireworks at all. Uh, I guess, I guess do, do people have a problem with the third? I can make a third board. Third? Third? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Third? Yeah. Third? Yeah. If it does, I'll take one for the team. My wife's going to hate me. Well, if it doesn't work, then say it. That, that was my question. If it doesn't work for you, I, I was asking who it wasn't, who, who. And if it was nobody, then we might as well have it. But if people can't make it, then let's change it. So that's OK. Is it is it inconvenient or like next to impossible? It's, to it's do it? more. It's not a given. You know, just 
it's been a historical thing. We've always gone to, with friends to on the Burlington fireworks. Like, it's right. suboptimal. Right. Okay, so I you get, like it's suboptimal for me too. Okay. I never know. Okay, then let's find another fireworks plans. So is the fifth workable? Does the fifth does the fifth work for anyone? Does the fifth work fifth for me? It was something about. I may or may not be able to do it. I signed up to volunteer. First work is on the fifth and sixth. Oh. Um. So I, but I might be able to. So don't worry. It's like I'm gonna be here. I won't. <laughs> yeah, but you could be here. Yeah. Does this work better for you? I have a I have a proposal. <laughs> what about canceling the meeting that week, <laughs> meeting on the seventeenth, and starting early? You can't. Can you? You're gonna set a tax rate on June seventeenth, July. Sure. You can't set it July seventeenth. Right. Yeah. Can't okay. make that one. So when do we need the tax? You need a tax rate that week. I don't yeah. care if it's can Monday, we do Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, or Friday. Can, so it can't can be the tax rate. You need it the week, first well, week. Like before the. Um, we need those tax rates. The special the inclusion the 12th, thing. The so let's check with oh, yeah. Dan tomorrow and see how close he is. Do we want to set if the tax rate right next week. meeting? We yeah. Can, we can, I don't want to pressure him. He's got to get the grand list done. But when it's done, <laughs> it's a one agenda. It could be a one agenda item meeting. Yeah. Can we not do it before the inclusion meeting? If it's a one agenda item? That's what I was thinking. Hmm. When do those start at six? Oh, yeah, if it's one. Well, they're booked all day on the calendar because I don't oh, have yeah. a date time. Yeah, but six to eight, I'd like that to do an hour. Let's do other things. Yeah, just an hour. Yeah, an hour. Or I guess we would want to do all the other discussion. And so then, but then we're pushing all the ordinances to the 17th along with. No, that's the 19th. No, no. Oh, sorry, sorry. 19th. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 19th is so still sorry. good. So sorry, so sorry. We're thinking a month from next week, that's what we're talking about? Um, I thought <laughs> last week, but who knows what anyone is right on right now, but I thought it was proposed that we would have a special meeting before the uh, training. Mm -hmm. um, the, the inclusion. Just training for, and, then the and then cancel July. And cancel the first meeting in July. July. Does that sound good to everyone? All right. Good. All right. Perfect on the one Vacation. Even we can get a vacation. All right. I think we need a vote on that. But, uh, I think we've achieved consensus. Um, now I need a motion uh, concerning uh, executive session. Who's got the personnel or legal? Personnel. Uh, both. Oh. <laughs> and potentially real estate. So do you want me to do findings for personnel or findings for personnel is low bulletin board appointment or evaluation of the public office or or employee appointment or employment or evaluation of public office or employee negotiating or securing of real estate purchase or lease options and pending a probable civil litigation. Okay, so do, do I do, do we need to move to find that premature public knowledge of pending civil litigation and clearly place the town at a substantial di disadvantage? Do you need me to say it again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Should I live? laughs> I move to find that premature knowledge of pending civil litigation involving the town of Waterbury would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. We have to find on just that, so someone needs to second that. Thank and you. Me to vote. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. So then, oh, no. oh, sorry. okay, so I move to enter executive session for the purposes of discussion Personnel, negotiating contracts, and discussion pending legal legislation, and invite the municipal manager to join us. Seconded. And there's no discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Abstentions? All right. Thank, Thank you all. Us. I don't believe there'll be any folks coming out of this. No.